everybody, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy you're here. Today is Vlogmas. What day is it? Day nine. So if you're new here, welcome. I'm Maddie. I'm a K through five STEM teacher and ed tech coach in Los Angeles. I post weekly tech tutorials for teachers. And during this period called Vlogmas, I'm actually posting a new video every single day for 25 days up until December. So be sure to subscribe to my channel if you're not already. So for today's video, I'm going to be showing you some ideas on how you can check in with your students using Padlet. Now I've done similar activities like this before on my channel. You guys know I really, really love Padlet, but today's video is really gonna be about giving you some ideas on how you can check in with your students before the holidays. Now I know December can be a difficult time for many students and it's a really great time for us to check in with them and support their social emotional needs. So without further ado, let's get started. So you'll see that I've gone to padlet.com and I'm going to create a new Padlet. So to do this, I'll click on the button in the top left corner that says make a Padlet. Now you'll see I have some options to choose from. For today's activity, I'm gonna show you how the shelf option in Padlet works, but there are tons of options, like I said, that you can choose from. So I'll click on select, and now you'll see that I can start creating my Padlet. So over here, I'm gonna give it a title. So I'm going to title it Holiday Check-In. And I'm gonna add a description. So I'm gonna say, write a rose highlight, thorn, difficulty and bud of your week. So what I've done for the directions here is I said, write a rose or a highlight, a thorn, a difficulty, and a bud, something you're looking forward to of your week. Next, we can add an icon. So because this is a holiday check-in, I'm gonna see if I can find an icon that I think is a little holiday-like. I like this frozen one, I think that's kind of fun. So I'll click the back button. Now you'll see that everything is actually auto populating for me on the left hand side here. This is a really nice feature of Padlet. So just as you start adding things, it actually starts to create your Padlet for you. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to change this address. Now, this is an optional thing. You don't have to do this, but I like to make this easier to remember. So I'm just going to type in holiday. And so now this URL is a unique link to my Padlet and it's going to be easier for my students to type in uh, to the Internet. Next, we have the wallpaper. So I'm going to click on this button and I can actually change the background. I'm going to click here where it says textures and patterns. And I'm going to see if there's any I like here. I'm going to go back. Maybe I'll take a look at pictures and see. All right, I think I like this snow background here, so I'm just gonna click on it. And now you'll see it's actually changed the background of my Padlet to be this white snowy color. Then I'll click back and now I can keep adding things. So I can change the color scheme if I'd like. I can change the font. There's only four font options, but I'm just gonna click on this one here to change my font. Then next we have some things about posting. So. A lot of this I'm going to leave up to you because you understand and know the needs of your classroom better than I do, but I do wanna walk you through which each, what each of these things mean so that you have a better understanding of, of these features in Padlet. So first we have attribution. If I turn this on, it means it will display the author name above each post, meaning that when a student actually creates a sticky note in Padlet, I will actually, everyone in the class will be able to see who that sticky note belongs to. So if you want this to be an anonymous activity, you're going to want to make sure that this is turned off. However, if you do want this to be um, not anonymous, you will want to turn this feature on. Because this is a social emotional check-in activity, I personally am going to leave this off. But again, it's up to you and what you think makes the most sense for your classroom. Next, we have this new post position. So when I use this shelf structure in Padlet, I personally like to have new posts appear last instead of first, because I want my example to be at the very top for students. You'll understand what I mean by this in a little bit, but basically this option here gives you the choice between having new posts appear first or new posts appear last. Then next we have comments. So this one is a little bit tricky. You know, in a lot of ways, it's nice for students to be able to comment on each other's posts, to give feedback, to share, you know, places where they agree, places where they disagree. 
because like I said, this is an SEL activity, I am going to leave this off. I don't want students to be able to comment on each other's posts. However, there might be instances in which you might want to turn this on, but I, am, I do wanna leave that one up to you. And same with for reactions. In my personal experience, I've found that reactions in Padlet can be a little bit tricky, a little bit difficult to deal with from a classroom management perspective. In some ways, you know, students liking posts, it kind of turns into a competition of whose post got more likes. And I just like to personally avoid this. However, I do know that depending on the needs of your students, you know, I'm going to leave this one again up to you. Next, we have content filtering. Um, so first of all, this first one here that says require approval. If I turn this on, it basically means that the moderator is going to, or me, is going to need to appro approve the posts before the rest of the class can see them. For the most part, I like to turn this on with elementary school students. I want to make sure that everything looks okay before it's shared with the entire class. I like to approve things. However, you know, Padlet works really well as a tool that you can use real time with your students. So I am again going to leave this one up to you. There's pros and cons to both, right? But because this is a social emotional activity, I personally want to leave this off or I personally want to leave this on, excuse me, so that I can actually require approval when students add post to this Padlet. I just want to make sure that I can sort of preview things before the entire class sees. Now, next we have filter profanity. I just personally love to point this one out because I think it's so much fun and kind of cute that Padlet actually replaces bad words with nice emojis. So it is good to note that this filter profanity feature is really nice if you are, you know, not requiring approval for posts. You kind of have a little bit less fear about what might happen because bad words are covered up with emojis. Um, I'm going to turn this on even though I am requiring approval. I just want to turn it on just in case here. Alrighty, so I think this looks pretty good. I'm going to click the next button and now you'll see that I can actually start posting. So I'm going to set up this activity. I'm going to provide an example and then I'll show you how you can actually share this with your students. So I'll click on start posting and now basically the way the shelf feature in Padlet works is you can set up different columns of activities. So because I have three things that I want students to share, I'm going to have a column for each of these items. So first I'm going to say my first column is going to say rose. Then I'll click save. My next column is going to say thorn. And my last one will say bud. Now I'll click save. And so now you'll see I've created these three different columns. I do have the option to create many, many columns if I'd like, but for this activity, I only need three. Next, I'm going to go over here to this little plus button and I am going to actually add an image under rows. So I'm going to click here and show you these options. So first you have this button right here that says upload. Now, if you have a com if you have an image or a file or really anything on your computer that you would like to upload, you can do that by clicking this upload button. Now, next we have link. So if you have, you know, you want to direct students to a video, any sort of link on the internet, you can do that by clicking this link button. Now, next we have um, searching for images on Google. I'm gonna actually, this is the one I'm gonna show you. Uh, so I'm gonna skip this one for right now. Then if you'd like to take a picture using your, your computer camera or your iPad or whatever device you're on, you can do that by clicking on this snap picture. Now, next, this three dots, whenever you see this in technology, it does mean that basically it's a, a menu for you to click on. So if I click on this, you'll see I can, there's all the options here. I'm not going to go over all of these. I would recommend if you do want to try out Padlet to explore these really cool features because there are so many amazing affordances to Padlet that you can find under this drop down menu here. But like I said, I'm going to show you how to add a picture through Google. So I'm going to click on this image button and now I can actually search the web. So I'm going to type in rose and you'll see I can, you know, look for an image. I can look for a video, a GIF, audio, something on the web. I'm going to look for a GIF. So I'm going to click on this. Oops, I have to type it in again. And I'll click search and you'll see that now there are some GIFs of different roses. Um, I kind of like this one, so I think I'm going to click on it. And now you'll see that it's actually been added to this shelf here. All right, next we'll go on to Thorn. So I'm going to do the same thing for Thorn. I'm going to click on the Google image search. I'm going to search for Thorn. Oh, that's funny. It pulls up pictures of Thor. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can find an image instead. Perfect. All right, I like this one. And then next I will add Bud.
All right, I like this one as well. All right, perfect. So now you'll see I've added my rose, my thorn, and my bud here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to provide an example for students. This is something that I always like to do with Padlet. I really like to model model this exercise for students, especially with the younger ones. I think it's just a good idea to provide students with an example. So for my rose, I'm going to say my rose is... I have loved learning with all of you this week. My thorn is I miss being in the classroom together. And then lastly, my bud is I am excited to have a break over the holidays. All right, so now you'll see I've added some examples. I've added what my rose is, my thorn is, and my bud is. And now when I am ready to share this with students, what I will do is I will go up to the top right-hand corner and I will click on the button that says share. So now you'll see that there are several different ways you can share this file with your students. The first thing I wanna point out is this button here that says invite members. Now this is something that is a little bit tricky and confusing, so I, I do wanna point this out. Inviting a member means adding a co-teacher to your activity here. So let's say, you know, you have a teaching partner or you want to share this with your teaching team. You can do that by clicking this add members button and then actually adding in their email addresses. Next, we have this privacy section. Um, this is another one I'm really going to leave up to you. It so depends on, um, you know, your personal views on privacy, how you want to protect your own students' privacy. Uh, but you do have the option to change this privacy here. So I am personally going to keep this Padlet secret, mean, meaning that it's hidden from the public. People can only view it if they have access to this link. So that does mean though that if, if students are sharing personal information, you do wanna make sure that this link is not something that you're just posting freely on the internet. You really wanna make sure that it's contained to your classroom. So you can change this privacy here if you'd like to so some of these options. You can you know make it private. Uh, you can have it be password protected. This could possibly be a good idea uh, for a way you could protect this uh, to, so that people have to have a password to actually be able to access this Padlet. Secret, I just explained that one. And then lastly is public. So anybody on the internet can see it. It even shows up in Google searches. For the most part, I highly recommend you never choose this public option. Ultimately, I'm going to leave it up to you. But when it comes to student privacy and student data, it's really, really important that we try and keep things as safe and secure as possible. Now, next we have visitor permission. So you do have some options. I'm gonna click on this drop down menu to explain. So first we have can read. So this means, let's say I've created a Padlet and I want nobody to be able to edit it, but I do want people to be able to view it. I would choose this option here. Now can write is what I want my students to do, right? I don't want them to adjust anything that I've created. I don't want them to be able to modify each other's works. All I want them to be able to do is just actually create and add a post. So I'll have this one selected. Now this last one is can edit, meaning that it's a free for all. The students almost have the exact same um, capabilities as you. They can't delete the Padlet, they can't invite collaborators, but they can, you know, have a free for all in terms of editing anything that is available here. So I like to always have this on can write when doing activities with my students. So now that we have these settings set up, I'll click back. I'm going to show you how you can actually share this with students. Now, I'm only going to point out three of the options here. You'll see that there are a number of different ways you can share this with students. But the first one here is to copy a link to a clipboard. So basically what this means is when you click on it, it just copies the URL, which in my case is padlet.com slash myedtechclassroom slash holiday. And it'll add it to my clipboard and I can just paste it anywhere. So I can just share this the same way that I share normal links. So for example, if you were teaching remotely, you could drop this link in the chat and your students could access it. If you have a learning management system, you could uh, you know, share this link through through your learning management system with your students. Basically, any way you share a link with students is how is what this feature would allow you to do. Now, next one is to get a QR code. So if your students use 
uh, iPads or tablets, any sort of device like that, getting a QR code could be a helpful way for them to um, find this uh, find this activity. This is especially helpful for pre-readers, though this activity on the screen here does require students to be able to read and write. Uh, and then lastly, the last option I wanna show you is share on Google Classroom. Um, if you use Google Classroom, Padlet makes it so easy for you to share these activities with students. You can just click on this button that share, says share Google Classroom and it will help you create an activity to assign this through Google Classroom. All right, and now I'll click the close button. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed my mini Padlet tutorial and getting some ideas for ways you can check in with your students during the holidays. If you liked this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and I'll see you back here soon. Bye, friends.